Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tennis Week with Joel, Kim and Chris on today's US Open preview. Sinner and Alcaraz land in the same half for the third consecutive slam. Defending champ Goff gets handed a tricky path. And Dominic Team faces Ben Shelton in its final Grand Slam. Kim, Chris, today is the 22nd of August and we are here to catch up on the US Open draws at Tennis Weekly HQ, New York City, Flushing Meadows, US Open. The final Grand Slam has arrived with the men's and ladies' singles draws unveiled today. As always, Tennis Weekly are here to provide our own legendary quarter-by-quarter -quarter analysis, share some tentative predictions, and unveil our US Open collector set player picks for 2024. But guys, first of all, I can't help but think, and I know I'm going to sound like a broken record when I say this, where has this come from? How have we arrived at the fourth and final Grand Slam of the season so quickly? I mean, we've only just had Wimbledon, the Olympics, Canada Masters, Cincinnati Open, and most importantly, Kim's summer holiday. I know. I mean, the Olympics finished like yesterday it seems it feels to me like it. Yeah. it feels like it and yeah i did have a nice little summer holiday thanks mm. so much for holding the fort and a nice in birthday the meantime. nice birthday yeah i've still got some uh red velvet cake left over which i shall Ooh, be having lovely. later pudding um so that's lots to look forward to but yeah us open season is upon us it is mad how quick the season mm. goes i it's... think what's thrown me is the two Masters events we've just had, Canada and Cincinnati, they're a week. I've been mm. sort of getting used to Masters events being two weeks and mm. uh, just going on and on and feeling feeling never ending. So maybe that maybe that's why. That is a bit nicer. But also if we aren't mm. ready, then are the players ready is my question because some of them have barely played a match yeah. on that continent yet. Yeah, they've all been off kind yeah. of, I don't know, Caroline Garcia has been in Portugal. Holidaying. Lately. Yeah, yes. it's nice photos from her time in Portugal. I mean, I think she's been training as well, but I and feel like you know, it's maybe. slightly more leisurely time. And so we don't know, yeah, what state people are going to be in. Like, how will the Olympics... Makes it more interesting, doesn't it? Well. They've been on is clay jo last, some is of them. Is Djokovic going to wear his knee sleeve again? Is it going to be blue? Ooh. Ooh. Who or knows? is it just yeah. going to be the same does colour he need it, it anymore? Wimbledon? Why would he, he change it for anymore? the US mm. Open, Joel? That's my question. Is it a good luck charm? Or do you not think it's a good luck charm? Might be a comfort blanket. Yeah, now, a comfort it. blanket. Because he's yeah. finally got the gold wearing it. He might never take it off. A he golden sleep knee sleeve. <laughs> oh, there we go. That would be a flex, wouldn't it? It would. <laughs> but we are here, to, as you said, Joel, to do our legendary uh, I know, what an introduction. preview. <laughs> yes. I feel that's a very bold statement to make and we've got a lot to live up to now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, listeners who haven't maybe joined us for our Grand Slam previews, we tend to go draw... Uh, draw by draw, quarter by quarter. Uh, let's start with the men this time round. Um, we do have Yannick Sinner as the top seed. Obviously, there were new there was news broke recently yes. about his um, mm. his you know uh, the substances found in him uh, earlier in the year. And I know you guys discussed that on our latest catch up that you recorded earlier in the week. So listeners, do go and listen to that one if you haven't already, because uh, it's well worth a listen. But do you think all of that news having broken will affect? Yannick Sinner here at the US Open do you think it's going to affect his performance coming in as the you know the top seed world number mm. one it's a it's a big question I think what I've been looking back on is some of the timeline and he would have actually done his press I believe for Madrid while suspended his pre-tournament press and that was like nothing had changed so I feel like if you're able to keep such a level head and keep everything kind of under the surface for all of this time mm. now the attention's on him he actually does have the validation of the fact he has been cleared behind him. Mm. So there is a lot of noise, but the papers say what they do. He's been cleared. And I think maybe he'll actually have a point to prove that this is actually only going to add fire um, to his or fuel his fire for this tournament because um, he is the person who needs the slam this year the most at this point. And the media kind of debacle has only just further cemented that. Well, yeah, because Alcaraz has won the last two slams. Sinner won the Australian Open. He'll be really looking to kind of round Pumping the slam the season off by getting another slam under his belt. He doesn't want to fall the behind one, number one, slams yeah. to Alcaraz. He wants to cement his status at the top. And obviously Djokovic has made a resurgence of late, obviously winning that gold medal. So yeah. Sin Sinner's got a lot to kind of to prove to make sure people think, yeah, he's he does still deserve to be up there at the top. Mm. But would you say, Joel, that he's got an, 
an easy quarter or are you saying danger man I, I, I know he's the world number one but I don't think he's he's had the perks of being world number one with this draw I think it's quite tough mm. if you look at the other seeds in his quarter he's got Tommy Paul he's got Stefanos Sissipas he's got Felix Ogier Aliasim and Daniel Medvedev as well at the bottom who we know that is we tough. know we know he knows his way around a, a hard court so I think he's got quite a tricky quarter and um yeah I think he'll want to obviously hope his tennis can do the talking it did the talking in Cincinnati and um yeah but I do think he's got quite a tough tough path if he does want to notch up another Grand Slam title Obviously, he did lose to Medvedev um, at Wimbledon. You watched mm, that match. Yeah. Medvedev hasn't won a title yet this season. How much do you think that that will kind of spur him on as well? Because Medvedev hasn't quite hit the peaks. He's obviously made Grand Slam finals in the last year um, and gone deep at tournaments, but he hasn't made the breakthrough. Do you think this is his best chance this year to do that? I do think so, because it, this is that time of year when naturally players are tired. The schedule has been so packed out that... I think that, you know, if there are weaknesses or tired legs, it's going to happen at the US oh, Open. So he's fresh because he hasn't won that much. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, these are hot, humid conditions. And I also wonder with Sinner, I know we speak about it every single, I feel like Grand Slam with him, but I always think there's a physical, uh, you know, there are always going to be physical questions around him at the moment with regards to his body. You know, he, he pulled out with a tonsillitis, uh, uh, you know, from the Olympics, but, you know, his hip has been an issue. And yes, he he won ugly, I think, a little bit in, in Cincinnati. And, you know, best of three, yeah, he can sort of mm. get away with it. But best of five, completely different challenge. And I think there's going to be questions as well around whether his body his body can, can keep up. Well, physically last year at the US Open... He did struggle a bit against Verev in that mm. match. And I saw him play against Stan and he certainly struggled through that one a little bit. Um, I was going to say, Kim, Tommy Paul and Stefanos Sitsipas, they really feel like they should be top 10 seeds. It feels like that's a particularly tricky draw because Tommy Paul, we've been talking about him being maybe the American number one by the end of the year, pushing yeah. forward. It's a tough time to draw Tommy Paul, isn't it? Yeah, and that would be a Yannick Sinner, Tommy Paul, I think fourth round potential matchup. So that's not, that's not easy. Tommy Paul with his home. Hang on. Lorenzo Sonigo crowd. first round for for Tommy Paul. I don't think, you think that's Sonigo's particularly... winning that, do you? I, I don't think that's particularly easy. I'm, I think Tommy Paul will come through that, but Sonigo, or should I say Sonigoat, uh, on his day, um, he's, he could be a tricky he has customer. Got a goatee, yes. <laughs> oh, Solo Sonigo T. Sonigo T, yeah. <laughs> What's his song called again? I can't remember. Solo. Oh, the song he brought out. Yeah. Oh, do we want to remind us? <laughs> Maybe that'll give it to the Arthur Ash <laughs> DJ. Yes, that's what yeah. he did as he walks I out mean, to it. Sits a pass Kokinakis. That's quite a big yeah, uh, I think block bas a blockbuster first round, perhaps. Could could go five. Um, but for me, I, I am looking at Daniel Medvedev from this quarter, actually. Uh, I know that he, you know, he's not in the top four seeds anymore. He's kind of got the perils of being just outside as the fifth seed. So if he is going to try and win this title, according to the seeding, he'd have to work his way through Sinner in the quarterfinals, Alcaraz in the semis, Djokovic in the final. But, you know, Daniel Medvedev, this is the scene of his greatest triumph. Guys, know, none of you, none of you are talking about Felix Ogier Aliassime. Uh, and he's had, I think, a little bit of a resurgence um, of late, bar a little bit of a dodgy match point uh, with, with Jack Draper. Do you think he's, do you think he's, kind of primed and ready for a deep run at a Grand Slam? I was at looking at some of his results to see if maybe I could see this happening at the US Open. Uh, as long as he avoids Greg Allensworth on match points, I think he's got a pretty <laughs> decent <laughs> chance. He might even request Ooh. not to have him in those yeah. matches. But I mean, Medvedev is a tough competitor in that section. Um, in fact, his first round against Mensik, that's also quite tricky. He's a very great um, mm. up-and-comer. And then you have the likes of Stefanos Sitsipas in there as well. So it's really hard to back Felix in these big moments because even at the Olympics where he played so well, he obviously came away with the bronze medal in the mixed, but he just fell short in the single. So he is, for me, still a bit of a maybe man. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree, to be honest. I'm not 100% convinced. I don't know if that was just a recent sort of resurgence, but I'm not sure if it will last, sadly. Uh, but I'd love to see it. I, I would love to see it last. I mean, for for Yannick Sinner as well, like he's going to have to come through, obviously not just this quarter, but the half. And in his half of the draw, he does have Carlos Alcaraz 
as the again. third seed. Yes. Again, why is it that since Yannick Sinner has become world number one, he has basically always been seeded in the same half as the third seed? Do, you, do um, the Grand is... Slam gods just not want uh, Sin Karaz Grand Slam men's final? Sin Clearly Karaz. not. Sin Karaz. I'm not sure that one's going to catch on. Al, oh, Al Karina? Al Karina? Sin Karaz? Sin Karaz. Sin Karaz. Oh, I'll that take that. Quite yeah, that one's yeah. okay. It's tough, isn't it? Because I remember it used to always be one and four, uh, two and three, mm. and it used to be done in a certain way so that they were spread out or you, there was an advantage of being a higher seed in that respect. Um, definitely not anymore. That's not how it's structured. And that's the same for all the other seedings where it used to be much more staggered in terms of who you who you could draw. But I mean, it's really strange, isn't it? With, with three players who are head and shoulders above the rest, it does make for these unfortunate situations where someone is always going to be in the same half who is right up there and competing at the highest level mm. and then you kind of get a bit of a bonus when you get you know Zverev you're in the other ten- side yeah exactly <laughs> so I mean Djokovic has been the beneficiary most of those times and he hasn't yeah. been able to take that opportunity so maybe it doesn't actually mean that a tougher draw means you get uh, an easy draw on the other side of the oh, net. Well, it's it's interesting you say that because also you can look at it from being in the top four versus outside of the top four because Medvedev is the fifth seed. And again, if you look at the bigger picture, I mean, he potentially could have to face Sinner, Alcaraz, Djokovic back to back to back um, from the quarterfinals onwards. So it shows again the sit to pass round 16. I mean, yeah, you want to be top four, you want to be top two because you just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, well, let's look at Alcaraz's section because in his quarter, I mean, I don't know if you'd say if his quarter was any easier than Sinner's quarter Mm. because uh, Alcaraz has got the likes of Jack Draper, Seb Corder, Alex de Menor, Hubert Hercash. So he'd have to potentially come through a mixture of those to to even get to a potential semi-final with Yannick Sinner. Who amongst those names is kind of drawing your eye? Do you think any of those can realistically challenge Carlos Alcaraz? Oh, it's a good question, isn't it? I think the bottom bottom half of quarter two. Manorino. 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 Yeah, he's yeah. really coming to form, hasn't he? <laughs> he's really not won a match um, on the US swing. But I think there are some weaker patches of this part of the draw. Uh, looking at the bottom half of quarter two, I think it's hard to pick a name because obviously Diminar has been injured. He's not really played. Hercatch was also in- injured. So it's quite unusual to have such unknown quantities coming into this obviously her catch has played the u.s swing but his form probably isn't where it would have been had he not had that setback at wimbledon so there's a big opportunity for players like arnaldi or players looking for form like kachanov um he plays dan evans in round one um so it's hard to know if anybody from the bottom half can challenge him i think the round of 16 might be easier than a round three against seb calder for example yeah, I think also, um, I mean, with Jack Draper, where are we at with, with Jack Draper? Mm-hmm. Shang's a, a tough first round as well, though, isn't he? Host yeah. Andy Murray, yeah. all eyes on him now. Is 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 he likely to go far in this draw? I mean, I feel like I feel like fans uh, would love to see Draper Alcaraz um, because I think there was, I think at the French Open, they were scheduled to meet mm-hmm. maybe early on, but it didn't, didn't happen because yep. Draper went out early. Um, but certainly here, I feel like he's had a good... US Open swing so far. He's in good form. I've, I'm, to be honest, I'm fully expecting to see that showdown um, in, in round three. Draper maybe Alcaraz. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe it's a step We're too far. It. Maybe it's a step too far at the moment, but I'd really love to see now Draper in a battle, in a test to see whether his level is at against the real top players at, in, in best of five, because I feel like we've seen it in best of three a little bit more than we've seen in, in, as I say, in the best of five format for him so far. Yeah, it's about time, isn't it? And I mean, I've just, on a sort of completely different note, we've got in this section of the draw, Fabio Fognini, mm. David Goffan. So still getting into slam main draws. Mm. Yeah, are you happy about that, Joe? I know you kind of love to see the, the legends you love of the, the game. You love a Goffan moment, strong. don't you? He's so good. I mean, he got in as a lucky loser, I believe, at Wimbledon. Uh, I watched him in qualifying and um, I love how he's just, you know he's he's still there he's still doing the grind he's such an elegant player so i just love seeing him in the draw and fabio fornini you just gotta i mean i'm still trying to make sense of it i don't actually know how he's he is in the draw well i doesn't have a wild card next to him so no. I imagine he's qualified by right he did pick up a few points on the challenger circuit recently but it must be surely yeah. at some point flavia panetta is going to say come home and take care of the kids because <laughs> give it a rest is he making any money on this at the moment that's the question <laughs> 
Well, I mean, he still draws the crowds, I suppose, especially the Italian fans out in New York, I'm sure, will be there in abundance to support. But let's have a look at the other half of the draw. And we'll start with that third quarter. Um, this quarter is kind of devoid of, I guess, the the new big three. I know I shouldn't say big three. That's that's not what we <laughs> no, want to No, keep saying it. Keep saying the it. The Sinner, Alcarazes and Djokovic to the world. Um, but we've got Sasha Zverev as the sort of higher seed here as the fourth seed but we've also got the likes of Casper Ruud and Taylor Fritz in this uh, quarter um, Holger Runa also here Ugo Mbert, Bublik Massetti uh, who obviously has had a really good summer mm. so far um, Chris coming mm. to you first what do you think of the Scandinavian chances in this draw with with Rude and Runa? Have you got any particular thoughts on those? Well, I mean, Kim, you may have seen my predictions based on what you said. I haven't because actually. I'm, I'm based I'm, in Denmark. I haven't been analysing feeling... them. <laughs> this is the Scandi section. Uh, I think there's big opportunities for Holger. It's a pretty good draw overall. I know it's very tough when you have to play against like a, a Massetti. Massetti doesn't have a great um, history here at the US Open. Uh, Zverev has obviously made it quite deep previously and he hasn't always got the edge over um, Zverev, Holger, but they've always been pretty close. So I think it could be a really big moment for him to step up, but it's very strange seeing, you know, the number 15 in the seed next to him, the mm -hmm. same with Fritz with the number going a bit lower, but there's a lot of players, you know, Casper at number eight is arguably probably a better draw than playing against, you know, a Fritz at number 12 in the first round. So it's a very even distribution, I'd say, of the, the middle tier of players. But, I mean, Umber could maybe throw a surprise, a big hitter. Serendolo. Uh, yep, Serendolo is definitely there mm, as well. But true. this is this is one where I am looking at the Scandinavians or Zverev to come through, I think. I mean, one yeah. player, one player I was going to say unseeded, who had a very good Wimbledon, uh, Pericard from France. Um, yes. Do you think he could... Again, a big serve. Ace his way. On his courts. Yeah. Could he do, could he just serve upon his way through through the rounds? Or or do you think, I think that's a Might have been a, a one flash in the pan at Wimbledon sort of job. A bit I, of a I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah. I mean, Matteo Berrettini's floating in here as mm, well. It's, it's yeah. a good Unseated. section. He's one to watch. Uh, but I mean, Kim, I, I have noticed we've got we've got all the uh, the three, the, the double barreled named Spanish pairs. We've got RCB. We've got PCB. PCB. We've got ARV, Ra uh, Ramos for no oh, lashes yes. as well. Um, and uh, oh, yeah, Roberto Caballos being you know, Yeah, so there's three of them in there. I mean, PCB <laughs> was a semi-finalist yes. previously. Yes. That, well, the, Djok the, the Djokovic run, we, we the, don't speak of anymore. Mm. I yeah. need a translator yeah. or a glossary. You completely lost me with this now. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. PCB actually in that semi-final, was it against Verov? And he was two sets up, wasn't he, in 2020? Uh, yes, I, I, think, I think so. Yeah, I think he was really why, why doing do I well feel that like, year. Yeah. <laughs> I can't but, um, remember. Yeah, Massetti think... also Opelka. That is a horrible draw. I think first round. I could, I could see, I could see the upset happening there. Yeah, for me, Zverev is probably going to come through this section. Um, personally, uh, maybe yeah. you know this this time he will do what he couldn't do in in twenty twenty. We'll see, but he will have to. Perhaps get through Novak Djokovic, who is going to be in his half mm. of the draw as the second seed, uh, right down at the bottom of the draw. But let's look at Djokovic's quarter now. Uh, the other highest seeds in Djokovic's quarter, Andre Rublev as the sixth seed and Grigor Dimitrov as the ninth seed. Um, Joel, what do you think Djokovic is thinking of this draw right now? Is he happier than Alcaraz and Sinner oh, are with theirs? I think, I think he's happy, of course, that he doesn't have Sinner, Alcaraz, Medvedev in his half. But the fact that he's got Zverev in his half. I actually think Zverev arguably is the biggest threat uh, to Djokovic in best of five set format. Um, and looking at his draw, um, you know, I think there are a couple of tricky matches in week one. Uh, and I think that will be good for him because he's not really had a lot of practice. He's had no practice, um, you know, on the tour since that Olympic gold medal. He could face Popper in uh, Canada Masters champion in round three. Francis Tiepo has also had a good run um you know of late um in in Cincinnati also in his section We've got Ben Shelton um but I still think you know Djokovic will be happy with this draw I think it's more up to other factors like as I say his knee lack of play but I do think with this draw it's he's got time to to bed himself in surely we can drop the knee thing now after his performance in the Olympic final but 
I was going to say on that point with Zverev, you think that genuinely Zverev is the toughest opponent for him over five sets. He's actually mm. never lost to him at a slam. I, at the, the way Zverev is playing at the moment and the way he, the way he serving, hasn't won a slam this year. Well, I, I, I get I get that. Neither is Djokovic, though. I mean, true. he's won the Olympics. Uh, yeah. it's strange, <laughs> I think stranger things have happened. And I still think we can't discount Zverev as a credible threat Um to Djokovic but the biggest his... threat is the oh. question I no I, I think the biggest think... threat would be in the final but mm, would, yes. would Djokovic come up against a banana skin before then I mean possibly Popperin, as the Canadian Open they champion they faced each other at so many slams this year in the mm. third round so many but slams it, it feels like with Djokovic he's got trickier tests in week one as opposed to a little bit more in week two I mean if you're looking a bit more like Rublev Dimitrov, Lehechka and Byers as the other seeds, that feels to be a bit more comfortable, a bit further down the line, um, getting yourself ready for some trickier tests to come from the other quarters. But mm -hmm. maybe the tests are a bit more in that first week. And Dominic that team, a moment for him. This will be his yeah. final Grand Slam. He was given a wild card. He wasn't given one for Wimbledon. He's no. obviously a former champion here. We refer to that final for Zverev. Um, this will be his final sort of well, swan song of his career. He will be playing in a couple more events before the year is over. Uh, and UTS, he's playing, I think, uh, until the end of the season. Um, he's playing against Ben Shelton. I saw the first set of this last year. I settled into my seat thinking this will be a fantastic match. And then there was a retirement. So Shelton went through. It was a very close 7-6 set. Um, team obviously hasn't had that much form coming in here. He hasn't been able to play the top events. Um, he's Shelton. had no luck with Grand yeah. Slam draws. I mean, his his record. I was I was I was reading this online. His record uh, for round one opponents at Grand Slam since um, twenty twenty two. I'm just going to read them now. Mm. Delian, mm -hmm. PCB, who was the twelfth seed, Rublev, the fifth seed at Australian Open twenty twenty three. Um, cash in unseeded. Okay, that's pretty good. But then Sissipas in that epic match. I think we will remember fifth seed, Wimbledon twenty twenty three. Bublik. FAA and now Shelton, yeah. Give give this man a break. Give but I would argue that then. <laughs> it's not like he's had Djokovic first round for every slam. But I mean, no. it, it's just obviously he's you know his ranking's not high enough. He's getting wild cards, and mm. you can't you can't odds it really. It's a shame, and that you know, obviously this is his last. Are we expecting slam. anything? Do you expect anything from him in round one? No. A, a set maybe, if that. A I, I break. fully think yeah. Shelton will come through, and actually, it's quite a lot of. Um, you know, excitement, I guess, from American fans because it could be a Shelton TFO third round mm. uh, in this section oh, of the draw. So Under the night, 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 yeah. night match. Yeah, that would be lovely. I think so. Absolutely. Um, so we're looking like Djokovic is probably going to come through this quarter, but let's see what, what may happen. I think it's prediction time now mm -hmm. uh, for the men's Our draw. legendary predictions. <laughs> legendary predictions, uh, a.k.a probably slightly wrong predictions. Yes. Um, we're going to try a bit different. So instead of going like round uh, the houses somewhat, we're going to just give all of our predictions each in one go. So um, yeah, we can then make fun of them after <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to volunteer out of you two to go first? I'll go, I'll go. I'll do Joel, the honorable thing. Do I'll the go first. Yes. Okay. So right. um, give us your quarters and your semis, final and champion, please. Right. Sinner, Medvedev, Alcaraz, Alex de Menor, Fritz, Zverev, Rublev, Djokovic are my quarterfinals. Sinner, Alcaraz in semi final one, Fritz, Djokovic, semi final two, and my final, Carlos Alcaraz, Novak, Djokovic. Who do I have as a champion? I've got to go with the statistics, the statistical goat, Novak, Djokovic. Fair right. enough. Fair of course, enough. you so got Taylor Fritz Djokovic in there. Win. I had to get Taylor Fritz relentlessly in there. predicting yes. Taylor Fritz. Relentlessly, until all in on Taylor Fritz. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think your predictions are quite sound, Joel. I do. Yeah, know, this actually. is Alex yeah. de Menar Maybe is my only question mark there. Really. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, shall I go next? I'll yes. leave Chris's uh, with bring up the rear later. <laughs> <laughs> so my quarters are Paul Medvedev, Alcaraz, Hatchinov, Umber Zverev. Dimitrov Djokovic semis Medvedev Alcaraz Zverev Djokovic and I've gone for Medvedev Djokovic in the final it's going to be a repeat of 2021 
uh, when Medvedev won. However, this time Djokovic is winning. I know they've played many Grand Slam finals on hard courts and Djokovic usually has come out on top mm-hmm. and I'm going for that again. No, Kim, no Yannick Sinner in the quarterfinals. What's going on there? Well, it's someone get calls him, getting the better it? of him. Yeah. Wow. I don't have faith right now. And I think Paul, as an American, might might do it. Could be his time. But we'll see. We'll see. And yeah. then Paul's not making it past Medvedev. So he's doing no, Med- hard I'm to going follow up Medvedev. a big win. <laughs> <laughs> going quite strong on Medvedev this yeah. time round, yeah. Um, nice. Chris, what about yours? I've gone for Sinner uh, FAA. I've gone for Alcaraz Arnaldi. I've gone for Rude and Runa, Lehechka and Djokovic. Um, Semi finals get a bit more serious with Sinner Alcaraz. I've gone for Rude Djokovic, mm-hmm. and then I've gone Alcaraz Djokovic, and unsurprisingly, my champion is Djokovic. Interesting. So we've got a Djokovic. Uh, clean clean sweep, sweep, yeah, amongst us. Goodness, we yeah. are predictable. But anything sticking out to you for my predictions, Joel? Come on, uh, Arnaldi, Lehechka, rude semi finals. Yeah. I'm not so sure, neither am I. But you know, <laughs> very I think he's, packed his, he's packed his golf clubs again. He's going to be looking for a golf yeah, course in, in, in the Flushing Meadows area. Is, yes. is my I mean, prediction. Flushing Meadows sounds a bit like a golf course, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was considering Arnaldi actually myself, but I went Hatchnell. So I, I kind it's of tough to find one. somewhere in that yeah, section. Yeah, yeah. So I, mm. I think that's a fair. It could be a surprise there. Yeah. Yeah. Granted. Yeah. No. Well, listeners, let us know. Do you agree? Disagree? Are you in Camp Djokovic uh, in your predictions? Let us know. 